expecting a phone call from Henry Brewster. Well, he's not going to call you on that phone. I know. It's ridiculous having a telephone that's never been connected. <laughs> Why did Uncle Joe put it up? Because it gives a hotel an air of class. But it doesn't work. Hey, you know it and I know it. Some of the guests don't know it. Oh, a telephone that doesn't work and an elevator that doesn't work? All installed by the manager, who also doesn't work. Uncle Joe, do you realize that we are the only girls in the whole valley who don't have a telephone? We're social outcasts. Yeah. I could have played shortstop for the Hooderville Hawks three times. They couldn't get in touch with me. Girls ain't supposed to be shortstops. It isn't that I don't want a telephone. It's just that we can't afford it. But it can't cost more than five or six dollars a month. We can earn that much. It's the cost of installing the phone that's holding us back. But Sue Ann Carter told me hers only cost ten dollars to install. Our phone will cost in the neighborhood of eight hundred dollars. <laughs> Why should it cost so much? Because the main telephone line runs along the county road. And if we want to hook into it, it means that we got to pay for stringing over two miles of wire from the hotel down to the road. Well, I guess we'll just have to go on being isolated from the world. But you're not isolated. You get your phone calls at Sam's store. And when Mr. Collins heard that his taxes were to be raised, he got very angry and ag, a g g r a v a t e d, agriculture. <laughs> now why would he get agriculture? <laughs> Floyd, don't you hear the phone ringing? Yeah. Well, why the heck don't you answer it? I ain't expecting a call. <laughs> well, that ding dong. Culture. Hello? Who? Oh, Henry Brewster? Oh, Henry, I, I'm right in the middle of putting up a... Floyd, leave that alone before you ruin it. I ain't gonna ruin it. I started the two bottom rows, didn't I? What's the message, Henry? Yeah? Can Billy Joe go to the picture show with you Saturday night? Uh-huh. To see... What's the name? The mad ghoul of Putney Downs. <laughs> yep, yeah, I'll see she gets the message. Charlie, will you run this out to Billy Joel? Sure. Come on, Floyd. <laughs> longer are you going to be? Mrs. Waller's giving me a big order. Call her back. Billy Joe's waiting for an answer, and it's important. Oh, well, uh, uh, Miss Waller's, I'll have to call you back. Oh, Sarah, get me Henry Brewster. Urgent. Hello, Henry. Yeah, I got an important message for you from Billy Joe. Uh, she wants to know what the picture is about. <laughs> I thought you said this was important. It is. She don't know if she's seen it. <laughs> what? Now, just a second, Henry. Start all over again and real slow so I can get it down. The Lord who? Lord Lackwell, yeah? Member of Parliament, respected. When the moon is full, he turns into a, a what? Oh, yeah. What's he turn into? <laughs> and he kills who? Spell it. A-P-P-E-R... Agriculture? Apperson. Cedric Apperson. Who's he? Lady Devonshire's butler. <laughs> Who's she? Lord, will you be quiet so Sam can concentrate? And he's caught by Inspector Snagelson. In whose yard? Oh, of Scotland Yard. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Charlie, tell Billy Joe Henry's waiting for an answer. Come on, Floyd, let's get rolling. Hello, Sarah? Uh, would you get me Mrs. Waller's back? Oh, no, hold it, hold it. The train's pulling out, and Charlie's got her shopping list. Because I had to write the story of the mad ghoul of Putney Downs on the back of it. 
Put me down. <laughs> well, never mind. The train's gone now. <laughs> Sounds like a good picture, Billy Joe. All right. Tell Mr. Trucker to call Henry and tell him I'd like to see it. And to pick me up about... Eight o'clock, Henry. And Billy Joe says not to be late. Well, I'm glad we got that settled. <laughs> this one goes out to Billy Joe and this one to Bobby Joe. Come on, boy. Hello? Who? Hold it, fellas. I got a message for Betty Joe, too. <laughs> from Betty Joe. One says no, and the other one says yes. Now, I don't know what order they came in. <laughs> what? Don't worry. I'll see that she gets it. I'll deliver it in person, along with a message from me to them. No more messages. He's <laughs> not going to take any more messages for us? No, and I don't blame Sam. I had no idea what was going on. Well, I guess this is goodbye to civilization. Three Bradley girls are doomed to live out their lives, cut off from all human content. Farewell, world. <laughs> oh, you're not taking them seriously. <laughs> Sisters, enjoy yourself Saturday night because it'll be your last date. We'll wither on the vine. Sam Drucker ain't gonna condemn these girls to a life of old maidenhood. I'm getting a telephone. Uncle Joe, a real one that's connected to people? <laughs> the famous words of Alexander Graham Bell, I'm going to open my own telephone company. <laughs> what is that? Remember what Uncle Joe said about starting his own phone company? Well, this is it. What? <laughs> I think Uncle Joe wants to talk to you. Oh, well, I'm going to talk to him. Hello? Is that you, Uncle Joe? Yeah, Kate, I, uh... Hello? 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 Can you hear me all right? Just fine. Yeah, I can hear you, too, just as plain as if you're standing right here. I am. How do you like it? I bought this from the Army and Navy surplus store in Pixley. $10.50. Take down the wires. Hey, these phones is going to be the means of bringing all the disconnected people in the valley together, including the girls. And everybody that subscribes to my phone company has to buy a set of these. One of the biggest selling points to my company is... <laughs> hello, hello. Hello. Hey, one of the big selling points to my company is... Uh... Hello. 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 Who's this? Betty Jo. I want to talk to your mother. Hold the phone. <laughs> Women they ain't got no scientific sense. Yes, Uncle Joe? Uh, Kate, I... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> hey, one of the big selling points to my company is that it won't cost a cent to string the wire. The wire's already in. What wire? Barbed wire. Betty Joe asked her science teacher, and he said my plan would work. Barbed wire? Yeah, there's miles and miles of barbed wire fence running from farm to farm. Just the itching to be hooked into a telephone circuit. Uncle Joe? Yeah? Give me a ring sometime. <laughs> well, hi, Joe. Where hey, are you? I want to get that 20 cents back I lost last week. I want a different seat this time. Let's make deuces wild. <laughs> Don't, don't go in there. Ain't we going to play in the dining room? We ain't going to play. How come? I've decided to call the game off. What? Then why didn't you let us know? How could I get in touch with you? Do you have a phone, Ben? Nope. Do you, Newt? Uh, no, don't believe I do. <laughs> How about you, Fred? Now, you know I ain't got no phone. Gentlemen, I've used this dramatic illustration to bring out the real purpose of this meeting. 
Now, if you'll all sit down. Uh, Joe, we didn't come here for no meeting. No, we came out here to play poker. Yeah. Will you sit down and listen? Oh, for oh, Pete's oh, sake. Oh, Friends, how many times have you sat in the living room staring at your wife, wishing you had somebody to talk to? <laughs> I ain't married. Well, if you were, you'd know the feelings. All through the ages, at times like these, man's thoughts turn to the best friend he's got, the telephone. <laughs> Let's go, fellas. Sit down. If you're trying to change my mind about taking messages, you're wasting my time. Sit down. <laughs> Thanks to your selfish attitude of non-message taken, I've been forced to take over the Valley's communications problems single-handed. Gentlemen, I give you progress. Where's progress? <laughs> Joe! Save your questions till later. It wasn't gonna be a question, it was gonna be a statement. I think you're... Save your praise till later, too. <laughs> it wasn't gonna be... Sit down! <laughs> Let's listen to Joe. Yeah, he might say something sensible for a change. Gentlemen, what would you say if I was to tell you you could have your phone service free of charge for the rest of your lives merely by purchasing one of these phones at the nominal charge of $10.50? Well, what would you say? You're off your rocker. Sam, you've got a phone. Well, now, if there's some way we can get one, we want to hear it. I direct your attention to the sales tableau, which will now take place. Hello? Hello? Oh, why doesn't she hear me? Because the Hootieville Telephone Company charges so much to string the lines. Oh, if there was just some cheap way to connect us up. I am a barbed wire fence, which you can find all over the valley. <laughs> Me too. Come on, let's go see if we can find some bicarb of soda. I can solve your problem. Just connect to me. Hello? Hello? I can hear you. It is a miracle. How'd they do that? <laughs> Thank you, telephone girls and barbed wire fence. <laughs> now for the master wiring diagram. We'll run a wire from the Shady Rest down to the Shady Rest stop, where we'll connect it to the rail. Because the rails are separated, Charlie and Floyd will put jumper wires between the rail ends. You smell something burning? Yeah, Floyd, it's me. <laughs> the current travels down the rail till it comes to the end of Ben Miller's fence, then continues on to Fred Ziffel's pig farm. Then barbed wires to Newt Kiley's place. <laughs> joins the Hooterville Telephone Company. Did you ask permission to do that? I don't need permission. We're brother phone companies. You got a wire clipper, brother? Why'd you do that? To save you ten years in the hooskow. Don't you know it's against the law to tamper with the equipment of a bona fide telephone company? My company is bona fide. Your company is rinky dink. Instead of interfering with other people's business, why don't you go back to your store and jack up a few prices? Okay, I'll see you Sunday, if the warden will let you have visitors. <laughs> ten years? How old will you be when you get out, Joe? You know, I was just thinking, why should I connect up the modern facilities of my phone company with the old-fashioned equipment of the Hooterville Telephone Company? Well, if you don't connect up, what good's your company? Floyd, Charlie, 
How would you like to be coordinating vice presidents of the Inter Valley Telephone Company? <laughs> Give you progress. <laughs> oh, we don't need that anymore. <laughs> Stupid dog. He gets one moment of glory and he can't forget it. Well, who's going to make the first call? I think the honor should go to Uncle Joe. That's mighty thoughty of you, Kate. And if you don't get electrocuted, we'll try. <laughs> what are you going to say, Uncle Joe? Well, uh... How about saying what Alexander Graham Bell said when he made his first call? What was it? Oh, yeah. Come here, Watson. I need you. Hello? Come here, Watson. I need you. <laughs> there ain't nobody here named Watson. You got the wrong number. <laughs> here, what are you trying? Why don't you call somebody, Mom? Who? Yeah, call Sam Drucker. Let him know we ain't dependent on him anymore for messages. Hello? Ben, could you put me through to Hooterville? Hold on, Kate. to talk to Hooterville. Oh, Hooterville. Okay, Ben. <laughs> hello? Uh, hello, Fred. No, nothing. Uh, I was just taking a bath. <laughs> Hooterville? Uh, yeah, uh, hold on. Vice President in charge of coordinating. Well, I want Hooterville. This is Hooterville. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, hold on. Uh, we're, we're through to Hooterville, Fred. Okay, through to Hooterville. <laughs> Go ahead with your call, Kate. Hello? Hello? You're through to Hooterville, Kate. Hello? Uh, what's wrong? Sorry, Kate, uh, you were talking into Charlie's mouth. Uh, Charlie, could you get me Sam Drucker? Hold it, Kate. <laughs> Hello, Sari. Connect me to Sam Drucker's store. Deposit how much? Have you got a dime? <laughs> Don't tell me Carson's folly's working. First call's going through. Phone's ringing, Sam. Don't gun it. I wanted to see this. <laughs> Sarah's ringing him, Kate. Thanks, Floyd. Hello, Drucker's store. Sam, I got a call for you. Hello? Hello, Sam. Uh, Kate, how are you? Just fine. I just thought I'd call up and say hello. Hello. Goodbye. Here, we better ring off. Talk to Henry. Now hold it. Billy, Bobby, Betty. Tomorrow we reverse the order. <laughs> Hello? Hooterville? Uh, hold on. Oh, 
gone. Line so as I can get some work done. And so am I. Horn Lane had his nap for days, and he's got big circles under his eyes. Well, I caught a cold in my nose, and I got to repair my barbed wire fence. We can't run the cannonball. We spend all our time around the station coordinating. Hold it, fellas. You're going to have to make sacrifices if you want to enjoy progress. <laughs> we don't need that. If you pull out of the party line and Mr. Drucker won't take messages, what are we going to do? Well, we're sorry, Betty Jo. Mom, when you were a girl living way out here, how did you ever get a date? Let you alone see, get uh, married, uh, cut off from civilization. No, you th the thing that... She was never cut off from civilization out here. She was in touch with Hooterville all the time. That's right. The railroad was busy then, and Kate helped us out, and we helped her out. Uh-huh, and... Remember, Kate? How can you forget those things? <laughs> Henry wants to know what time. Tell him to pick me up at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. This is for Henry. This one is to Betty from the Hooterville Hawks. When you missed practice, the coach got very agriculture. <laughs> Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.